wearing an inter interesting contraption over there. Why don't you come over here and show everybody what you got? This is, is one this? of the original Mike Austin Flammers. Okay, a lot Flammer of people out there will know, will remember what that is. Right. Okay. And come on over here. To it's going to show us all the things that we've been talking about. That's right. You know, we talk about drills and how drills really will make us understand how the moving parts go together and how we can attain them. But this here, this, this flammer swing device, puts it all together in one motion. This is actually, yeah, this is actually, yeah. we'll show you what a perfect golf swing feels like. You know, it looks like, you know, you got the, your harness in and everything. You know, it's a little more intimidating than some of the other training aids out there that might be out there. Right. But what you feel from it is so valuable that just swinging with this thing for five, ten minutes a day will actually help you develop a perfect golf swing. Let's look at some of the things that it, that it does. That's right. That's okay. right. So, as we get the club going away, mm -hmm. we'll see at the top of our swing how the device, because of this brace, yes. this bar on the grip, keeps that left wrist into that flat position. That's right. That right hand underneath. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the big thing that it does that you'll see right away is how it keeps the radius That's right. of the swing. That's right. It doesn't let you break down. You see, it keeps the... Now come back back to the front again. Now see, he has a fixed measurement between his sternum and the butt of the club. Everybody starts with a measurement there. The differences in our swing and why we're, we're ending up a lot more precise is we're going to maintain, might call this the mean radius. So this keeps you there by the telescoping device. Go ahead and take it back again. So when he reaches the top of his swing, he will still be the same distance from the swing circle center out to the butt of the club. It means that his club is on the same railroad track as it started on. He can bring it right back into the ball given that he keeps this point as fixed as possible. And this is really how you'd build a swing robot. You would have a fixed center point. You'd have a constant radius around that center point. And that club head will come around. It'll never miss the sweet spot of the ball. And that's how Mike was able to, mm -hmm. by controlling those two things, Mike was, Mike was able to wear out a sweet spot the size of a dime into a rust spot in his clubs, while the rest of the club will be completely shiny chrome, just right in the center. I mean, good PGA pros might have a quarter yeah. or a 50 cent piece worn out spot, but Mike's was a dime because he never missed the, miss hit the ball because of these two things. Now about the plane, this also does not let you get off plane. You can't go too flat or behind your back because the center, this will, this disc peels the disc, off the, the chest The disc line. Will, will leave flush. You can't go too upright because the same thing, the disc will leave flush with your chest. You know, speaking of the radius mm -hmm. of the swing, you know, we see a lot of people in the driving range and they'll swing, maybe they'll achieve a nice high hand position, but mm -hmm. invariably mm -hmm. they will get down in here and finish lower than they were over here. Sure, sure. Okay. Right. And that we know from that would be a bad pivot. Yes, yes. Okay. But it'll just, it'll destroy the arc of the club. That's we want right. to maintain the club's arc all the way through. Let me come around the thing on this I, side of yeah, you. Now take it, now take it through to the finish for us. Yeah. The thing that I find with this device is it almost, it won't let you go break the that's take right. The axle off. It almost That's won't right. let you do That's that. Right. That's right. So, as I go to the finish, it takes me to that high That's right. position. That's beautiful. That I had on the other side. That's right. And his hands are high up over his shoulder. He's still maintaining the exact same radius he started with. It's terrific. The thing that's interesting, though, I wanted to touch on yeah. is the movement of the right foot. Okay. How it doesn't stay necessarily fixed. True to the position that it starts at. Now you're gonna, you know, I think I know what you're about to describe and this is also another thing that people are gonna find a little bit unorthodox maybe that we do in the swing, but there is a great athletic and physiological reason why it is so superior. Show us that move of the, this is dragon of the left toe. Okay. His right foot has actually left the, uh, not quite left the ground, but it's dragging across the ground. It's not dragging along the stick. It's dragging like he was tiptoeing in a semicircle around his left post. 
So it's actually kind of heading out in the direction of one o'clock. And why does that, why does that, here. let's explain why that happens or should happen. Well, there's a, there's a couple of things here. Number one, it enables you to make, finish out a full pivot of the weight all the way to the left foot so that you can end up on a balanced foot. That's number one. So it's a superior weight shift to leaving it down. You're able to more completely drive your navel over to the left side, onto the heel, wind up and balance this way. The other thing it allows to do, and as like Mike always said, he wanted us to detach the right heel from the ground, not leave it down like they're some people are teaching now, to leave this knee straight and that heel down. I'm just doing this, I can feel my back hurting already. I see a lot of younger players learning this type of move here. And just doing that and trying to twist around it, I can feel yeah. my lower vertebrae the, already feeling. Or the resisting of the hips and just trying That's to straighten right. the upper body. That's right. So the, you watch sometime, if you watch the, the, a discus thrower, a discus thrower will actually come around and throw the disc. The same thing with a baseball pitcher. They'll come around and they'll let their right foot swing around even or even past yep. the left foot. That's right. So if I'm pitching... I'm allowing that right foot to go through. If I'm throwing a discus, I'm switching feet and continuing my spin. Now what that is doing is it's allowing, since the upper spine is going to be facing that way, we don't want the, or, or this way, and the lower spine is going to be turning around that way, we don't want to end up with too much of this energy twisting up the spine. So we're going to allow, this is going to allow the right side to continue turning around keeping up with the left side mm -hmm. and we're going to keep the torsion off especially the lower spine so if you turn around for a second we've got a couple of turn around and face away and face them with your rear end <laughs> this way okay. there we go so pointing out a cut you know crucial spots right here in the lower back right about here you have your the um the ring between your l4 l5 and your l5 and your s1 down in the lower part of your back, and those are only designed to twist. Now, can you turn back around again? The, those are only designed to twist just a little tiny bit, just a couple degrees. Mm -hmm. And when you start twisting the spine, it's like you're wringing out a towel. It's not safe, and it, you know, you won't necessarily suffer an acute injury, but a lot of balls over a long period of time, you might start to chip away at it, chip away at it, until you're finally maybe in some, um, you know, chronic pain or discomfort. Or whatever. Now there's a lot of young guys on tour that I think may be headed for a little bit of trouble in that regard. And yeah, we've seen that recently. Because we ha they haven't done that. So we're looking for this move. Turn up. Show them how that fits together again. Watch the foot is going to drag out to one o'clock and then turn up. And that'll leave him in a perfect finish position. Balanced on the left foot, not navel to here. the target, and you see that he's got he's maintained not only the width, but he's maintained the plane of the swing. Uh, one more thing, if you could swing that way, I want to point out one more thing about the plane with the flammer that the flammer forces you to do. That would be the plane of the swing. So when he swings this way, you'll see that his arm should be splitting between the ear and the left shoulder. Not on the shoulder line, that would be too flat. It takes this 90 mm -hmm. and cuts it in half. Right. If it's getting too flat, your left shoulder might be going out and you're getting off that you shoulder. You might be packing the arm That's and right. the disc on his chest would not stay flush. So this flammer device is teaching you width, it's teaching you plane, and it's teaching you release. The release. Show them, the, re just show them the release face on. It's, that we, we demonstrated That's here right. with, you with the That's club. That's right, just like that. I'm snapping this is it the over. release we're looking for. That's right. Now this device will not only allow you, but it will f almost force you to allow the roll of the forearms to occur, to right. square up the club and continue to advance the club head around the arc that it, we want it to travel And on. it's a forearm roll, not a hand roll. The right hand simply is passing, that's more right. or less, the that's left right. hand. That's right. But the forearms are showing roll. Yes. And that's what the hinge allows us to do. So it really gives you that really good feeling of releasing the golf club good. to a full high finish. And this is a prototype, so we can expect to see this coming out again and being re-released sometime soon. Uh, 
I, I think that it's going to happen, yes. I think it's something that's needed. Yes. Especially for what we're doing. Yes. Um, this, this is almost like, a, you know, this by itself will almost give you some, some good knowledge without having us there or somebody that's, else that's there. That's right. That's right. It's like having your own personal pro. Right. That's exactly right. Oh, look for this to come out sometime in the near future, really re-released. You cannot find this on the internet, no matter how no. much you're willing to offer right now. Nope. They're just very, very scarce. Nobody will sell theirs. I won't sell <laughs> That's mine right. Either. They're too valuable.